What's going on patients and fellow cannabis enthusiasts? There's been some exciting news in the world of cannabinoids recently, and I want to share it with you guys today. A paper recently published in the Journal of National Products has reported the discovery of four new cannabinoids. So what are these new cannabinoids? Are they safe? Are they legal? And much more coming up. Let's dive in. What's going on y'all? This is Dr. Andreoni, AKA the Cannabis Doc. Did you guys catch that dive just now? I'm <laughs> saying. So recently, a group of researchers reported the discovery of four new cannabinoids in an article titled, A NRF2 Stimulatory Hydroxylated Cannabidiol Derivative from Hemp. Bruh. So let's take a look at this article. Oh, let's give this article a look, shall we? Charlie, you bit my finger. What were these researchers doing? So it's always good to look at the abstract first for any article that you're looking at. This way you kind of get the overall gist of what's going on. I'll summarize it for you. Basically, it says that this group of researchers were analyzing hemp-derived crystallized CBD in the lab and actually identified 13 unique compounds. They identified no cannabinoids like CBD and its respective acid CBDA, CBC, even THC, but they're also claiming they've discovered three to four new cannabinoids as well. Among these are anhydrocannabimovine, which they're saying they've isolated for the first time as a natural product. And the other three newly discovered cannabinoids are hydroxylated CBD analogs, which basically means they're derivatives of CBD and they share similar structures. Their names are 1,2-dihydroxycannabidiol, 3,4-dehydro-1,2-dehydroxycannabidiol, and finally hexacannabitriol or HCBT. These compounds are formed by exposing CBD to air for a long period of time or through the enzymatic conversion of CBD. The research didn't really specify the time required for this to happen, so we don't really know. Out of the aforementioned molecules, they're claiming that hexocannabitriol potently modulated in a reactive oxygen species independent way, the NRF2 pathway, outperforming all the other cannabinoids that were obtained in this study, even CBD and THC. And we know those have some pretty good anti-cancer and antioxidative properties. Okay, not bad. Like I just mentioned, all of these newly discovered cannabinoids are all derivatives of CBD. This means that all their structures are very similar to CBD, but they're not the same. We are not the same, my am a Martian. And the differences lie amongst the cannabinoids' functional groups. The functional group attached to the cannabinoid plays a critical role in determining which receptor can be affected by the cannabinoid and which won't. And this is why we see that some cannabinoids produce different effects. Research has shown that a minimum of three carbon atoms is required to initiate interaction with the CB1 receptors. And the amount of activity or interaction with these receptors generally increases as the amount of carbons in that side chain increases also. This is why we see the long side chain cannabinoids producing a more potent effect than the shorter side chain cannabinoids. A great example demonstrating this is THCV, THC, and THCP. THCV only has a three carbon side chain, THC has a five carbon side chain, and then THCP has a seven carbon side chain. And we know that THCP is more potent than THC. We also mentioned the cannabinoid's potency increasing when you add the acetate ester as well, but that's not what we're discussing here. But anyway, for our example, hexacannabitriol is particularly unique because it possesses a functional group called 2-hydroxy-delta-1,7 hexomethylene, which facilitates HCBT's interaction with oxidative stress regulation pathways that are involved in diseases like cancer, thus demonstrating its role as an antioxidative agent. Research has shown that the higher number of hydroxy and carboxy groups in the cannabinoid, the more likely it's antioxidant activity. And if we look at HCBT, we can see that they have this here, thus validating what the science has shown. This is also why we see that the acidic cannabinoids like CBDA and THCA possess higher antioxidative properties than its neutral counterparts. And this structural difference between HCBT and CBD is also the reason why CBD can interact with the CB1 and CB2 receptors to some degree, while HCBT does not. So as an aside, none of these newly discovered cannabinoids, including hexacannabitriol, will get you high. If this just got you sad, you need Jesus. Bruh. Is hexacannabitriol safe? Well, because all these molecules are derivatives or analogs of CBD, and given CBD's track record so far, I would say these guys are pretty safe. In addition, researchers believe it to have better chemopreventive and anti-cancer properties compared to CBD. And this is likely due to its powerful antioxidative properties. So that seems promising. However, they did just discover it and we only have one article to really go off of, so let's take it with a grain of salt. And don't hold me to it. No need to worry though, these molecules, including HCPT, are only present in trace concentrations or very small amounts in the actual hemp plant, if at all. And for now, to my knowledge, there's no products that actually contain HCPT, yet. I don't really see why there would be since it doesn't really get you high. 
and I'm 95% sure that there's not a synthetic version of this. If there is, it's probably not HCPT. And because it's so new, there's a really good chance that labs aren't even testing for this on the COA yet. So you're probably not gonna see it on the COA. Again, we only have this one report to go off of, but so far it seems promising. Once we have more research to confirm these findings, that'll be amazing. Are these cannabinoids legal? They sure are. And that's because they're found in trace amounts, if at all, in the hemp plant, which is what we're talking about right now, and because they're not THC molecules themselves. As long as they meet those criteria at the very least, the farm bill should be good with it. But like I was saying earlier, because these cannabinoids are found in very low amounts, if at all, in the hemp plant, and they don't even get you high, I really don't see the industry putting a lot of time and effort into making these cannabinoids mainstream. However, if down the line HCBT proves its anti-cancer and antioxidant effects over and over, that might be a different story. I definitely look forward to learning more about these new compounds and their potential benefits. Let me know what you think about these compounds in the comments below. Guys, if this information has been helpful and you're feeling the vibes, don't forget to subscribe. No, I'm saying. To all my current subscribers, you guys are freaking awesome. I can't believe this. Love and appreciate y'all. And don't forget the other cannabis doc, the MC. Larry Cannabis. On the Uno Idos. YouTubers, what's your favorite song when you're getting high? Let me know down in the comments below. And with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.